Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time we have an unboxing of the Motorola Moto G54. Let's get started. I forgot to say 5G in the name because this device does have this connectivity. And by the way, at least here in Mexico, you also get the Moto Buds 13S. Although, being a borrowed unit just for the review, we don't have those headphones here. But when you buy it, they are included. This if you buy it directly from Motorola and some distributors. But here in Mexico, there is a bit of a mystery as to which dealers do include the headphones and which dealers do not. Let's see what comes in the box. But before we open the box, we have here on the back a quick look at the design of this device and its main features. For starters, we've got 6.5 inch full HD plus display. We also have Dolby Atmos. Here's the color palette that it comes in. And we have 50 megapixel camera with optical stabilization, 5G and the headphones that I was telling you about. Before I go on, let me also tell you about the price because in Mexico, it comes in two versions. 128 gigabytes at 4,999 pesos. On the screen, you see the reference price in dollars, and we also have the addition of 256 gigabytes at a price of 5,499 pesos. In both cases, it seems to me a very attractive proposal because generally Motorola was handling higher prices, but in this new generation, it seems that they adjusted their prices to be attractive. Just remember that the prices here are not the same as over there. Now let's get the contents out of the box. As usual, Motorola sends us the device with the case on, I guess to save a bit of space. In this case, I have the green edition, but let's remove the case. I do not know if you reach to see it on the camera, but we have a synthetic leather finish on the back. That gives it a differential seal with respect to other devices in its range. So it's very nice. Frames in plastic with metallic look and on the front we have again the same features that were already highlighted in the box. Let's turn it on and see what else comes here in the box. Let's see if it sounds like Hello Moto. First of all, we have a quick guide and the usual papers with legal information and other things. There is also the tool to extract the tray. We also have the charger which is 20 watts as you can see it's included in the box I think it's not the fastest charging but I think for the price it's okay we also have the cable here that comes from USB A to USB C in that sense it's a good experience unlike Samsung who doesn't send us charger included also notice that I thought that the Motobots were not included in the box but had to come separately but look at the surprise we are getting apparently the Motobots do come in the box So, what a surprise, although they do feel like they have a simple build quality, so they are basic headphones, but it is very interesting that they include wireless headphones. Let's not even say they are including wired headphones, it seems that Motorola is really raising the bar on their proposal, giving a tighter price point and offering good stuff in the box. Later I will make an individual review of these headphones so you can know their quality but I like that they come included in the box and also come with these rubber bands so you can select the size of your preference. As you can see these are closed headphones so these rubber bands can help you and here you can choose if you want the large medium or small size. I had a long time without having so many things in the unboxing so I'm going to save all this and I'll be back to give you a full look at the cell phone. Now that we have the device configured, let's take a quick look at its specifications. It weighs 174 grams and is 7.99 millimeters thick. The screen is a 6.5 inch diagonal LCD with full HD plus resolution and a refresh rate of 120 hertz. So it has good sections, although honestly under sunlight it has a very plain display. But for indoor use, I think it is a screen with good quality, good level of detail, and as I mentioned, a good refresh rate to show smooth movements. The front camera is 16 megapixels, and on the back we have 50 megapixels for the main camera with f-aperture 1.88 and optical stabilization. 
And the secondary camera is only a 2 megapixel macro camera for the vast majority of the world. In Mexico this is the edition that is distributed, but you should know that in India there is a version that comes with an ultra wide camera. For some reason Motorola decided to leave that edition exclusive to India. We would have loved to see that here as well. As a first impressions look, the preview before taking a selfie picture still doesn't look very good. But after taking the picture I think it does balance highlights and shadows well, although it doesn't do it in an amazing way as there are still areas where the image looks overexposed. But I think it's not bad at all considering it's a budget device. The 50 megapixel camera is going to give us a good level of detail, although I'm not sure it's going to take full advantage of all the information on that sensor. Here we're looking at another 50 megapixel picture and I think it's good enough. The one I definitely didn't like was the macro camera. In this case we are looking at a photograph taken with the main camera and you can see that we have a good level of detail. I think it lets us appreciate perfectly well some textures and notice that the macro camera is this. It's practically the same distance from which you can focus with the main camera and with the macro camera. If you get closer with the macro camera it comes out completely out of focus and notice that it has a much worse color rendition compared to what we find in the main camera. This is a reference photograph and this is the maximum zoom that it leaves us which is 8x digital, a pretty simple zoom honestly. Maybe at 2x it still manages to maintain something considerably good but beyond that I think it starts to fail a lot. And here I took another picture so you can see just how the macro camera is definitely very bad compared to the main camera. I think we get a lot more detail with the main camera and the macro camera falls way short. The battery in the model that is distributed in Mexico is 5000 milliamps, but in India there is a 6000 milliamps version. Fortunately the device does have stereo sound in both cases so I think the experience will be quite good in this aspect. It comes with Android 13 and something that I find very curious for us to highlight is that being a device, in this case in green color, the operating system also comes adapted in green color and observe how the dialog boxes and some other areas are also going to be in green color. Even inside the camera we see some details in green, the quick settings panel will also be in green so everything combines well with the color of the device and that is a detail that I liked. However, here in Mexico it seems that the manufacturer adds several applications. During its initial setup some games were installed that fortunately I can uninstall but the truth is that I would have liked it better if they didn't add so many applications. It's those games and some social networking apps so the good news is that Motorola did let us uninstall these apps if you don't find them useful. Also, it retains the traditional gestures to enter the camera or to turn on the flashlight. In this case, I have the 128GB storage edition, but as I say, there is a 256GB edition that sounds very attractive, and depending on the markets, you could find RAM memory of 4, 8, or even 12GB. In Mexico it is distributed with 8 gigabytes and finally the processor in all versions will be the Dimensity 7020, a new processor from MediaTek. So let's test with a benchmark what would be the approximate performance that this device could have and with which Snapdragon processor we could compare it. Here are the results, 919 in single core and 2325 in multi core. Just so you try to place yourself a little bit, these numbers would be slightly above the Snapdragon 695, which is a processor that we've liked very much in the testing that we've done. So there's not a processor that I would say is exactly equivalent in the Snapdragon world, as this is above the 695, but below the 778 in many instances. However, remember that this is just a numerical test but we will see the real performance in the review when we open several applications, export video and also test how it does in games. For now it has been an initial glimpse, I hope you liked this video, if so you know you can tell us and we'll see you next time.